Hello everyone and welcome to Who is Mineski? Mizram here presenting you the East Qualifier teams of the International 2013. Mineski is a team coming from Philippines and it has been up and running since 2004. You heard that right, 2004. So it's the oldest and still active Dota team out there. By comparison, you have to understand that most of the competitive Dota started to appear around 2007 and 2008. So it's very, very, very ancient. Um, they have been going under different names in Dota 2, so Minesky Infinity, in, back in TI1, Minesky HyperX, and Minesky Razor nowadays. And that's not because they have different teams and rosters, it's just because they, their team name changes, uh, you know, considering the um, sponsors. So they have been a strong team uh, back in Dota All-Stars era. Uh, they have been the dominant team in Philippines, but when they went into competition with other Southeast Asian teams that were not from Philippines, they didn't really achieve that many, um, you know, wins. So if you compare that to Mistrust, for example, who got a lot of um, championship under their belt, uh, Mineski have been out there for long, like I said, but they haven't been winning that much. They have a huge Filipino fan base. I think their Facebook page has like more than 500,000 likes. So it's really, really mind-boggling how many Filipino actually back up that team. Uh, they have been invited to the International 2011, but they have had so far very disappointing results in Dota 2, even more so than Mistrust. <coughs> Excuse me. So the players, as for the first position, you have Yanni. Second, you have Javan. Third, the captain is Bimbo. Fourth and fifth is Owa and Geo. Now you have to understand that uh, Mineski have very versatile lineup. And what happens is very often you'll see Javan and Bimbo switching roles, for example, and Owa and Geo also switching roles. So it really depends on the hero more than on the position itself. Yanni, so far, I have only seen him play as carry, so I think Yanni is like fixed. But Jovan, Bimbo, like I said, and Owa, Geo, they, they switch around. Uh, another thing to note is that they have very, very young players, uh, 1993 to 1995, and compared to some other veterans all there, uh, out there, you know, it, it's very, very young. I, I said that like twice, but I can't, I can't put emphasis enough about that because most of the players started Dota 1 competitive very, you know, very early and they were very young. For example, Merlini, I think he was 16 or 17 when he was playing with MYM. But um, nowadays, he's like getting older and older, and most of the players in Dota 2 that are in big teams are at least 20 or, you know, 22 or 23. But, um, you know, all the players coming from Ineski are under 20, as far as I know. So I have put also some different names for those players, because uh, those are the names they have been playing under very recently in the games that uh, we could spectate like one week ago. So that is for you to actually recognize the player and not say, okay, so uh, not say like, oh, okay, so I saw that it was Owa and Geo, but I know I don't really know who those guys are, if it's Itch or Fat Dog. So here, Jay, also known as Bimbo, Itch, also known as Owa, and Fat Dog, also known as Geo. Joven sometimes doesn't even put a nickname, they, he, uh, he only pits like Mineski Razor. And Owa is the only player back from the first international roster. Uh, all their veteran players have left for other teams, like Lydian Le Dreams, or I don't really remember the others. So that's also a problem compared to Mistrust, who hasn't haven't been you know that strong in Dota 2, but they still keep the same roster. Whereas Mineski have been changing quite a lot, and their new roster hasn't really achieved anything, uh, you know, very strong either. So let's go over the achievements, or rather the lack of achievements. 2004, 2011. Uh, I wrote dominant, but it's more like strong Dota 2, uh, Dota All Star South Division team. Not really that dominant, as I said in the introduction. 2011, 2013, uh, it's like mistrust. Most of the South Asian team really like to play both Dota All Stars and Dota 2. So we can see that, for example, they have been playing World Cyber Gang 2011 and they were ranked 2 in Dota 2 and ranked 3 in Dota. So that means they have been playing both games and still achieve quite a high ranking, which is fairly okay. I mean, fairly good even. So they also participate in SMM 2011, ranked 3rd. And in the International 2011, they were ranked 10th. Now, I have put Tides Wrath, and it's an Australian tournament where they were ranked 2nd, and that's not really to praise them, but rather the opposite, because Tides Wrath is a very recent tournament, so that means it's, it's really relevant to what is going to happen very soon, and they, it's a very small Australian tournament. The prize pool is around $1,500, but they got defeated in the final 3-1 by Rimelin, which is a, a you know local Australian team's 
uh, which might be like the strongest Australian team out there, but the thing is, outside of Southeast Asia, no one ever heard of Rimelin. They haven't been participating in any tournaments uh, outside of Southeast Asia. And the fact that they even lost to that, a team 3-1 means that they, they really aren't so much prepared. Not to mention that even in the GST, uh, if you guys don't remember, GST is monthly uh, tournament, and there is a qualifier for each country. In the Philippines, for the GMPGL uh, qualifier, um, Mineski isn't even always first. I think this year they have been first once, second once, and third once. So that means even inside Philippines, they aren't always the best. So I'm really scared to see how they are going to go into that East qualifier. So of course strength weaknesses, you already kind of know. Strength, huge find base, and unconventional picks. We have seen them going for draw rangers, slaughter picks, uh, you know, solo Omni Knight, stuff like that, which you don't really often see. But the weaknesses, of course, is underwhelming performances and really underwhelming. Plus, the veterans from Tier One already all left the team. They haven't. They have even been on um, uh, Gozu Gamer a an article saying, okay, so is the because I think Jules, who was a, a you know their carry player, kind of the star player, left the team, and the article was like. Is that going to be the last nail in the coffin for Mineski? Mineski right now feel like a relic of the past. They haven't adapted to, to, to Dota 2 yet, and they have been invited in 2012 in the East Qualifier as well. They have been defeated in the first round. And then in the loser bracket, they, have, they, they got defeated by ICE, a team that I don't really remember, in the 2-0 uh, as well. So Mistrust knocked them out 2-0 in the winner bracket and in the loser bracket they got knocked 2-0 again so my verdict is going to be the ace position weakest team in the east qualifier and if you're a mineski fan or you know i mean by all means pray for mineski to prove me wrong i would love to see some upset and some surprises but so far from what i've seen anything else than a miracle would make mineski get up to the international level. Uh, Mineski is not that close to TI3 and I mean it, it's not close at all. It's really really far. I think even some other teams that weren't inviting the East Quiafer have more chances to get there than Mineski. They could get 6th place, 7th place if they beat some South Asian teams uh, that got invited too because some South Asian teams that got invited are pretty um, uh, unstable in terms of uh, play. Sometimes they throw games. So I could see them getting to 6th or 7th place, but anything more than that, I wouldn't put any any faith on it. So I'm gonna link to you guys some replays and some cast from Beyond the Summit of recent games from uh, Mineski, so you can make up your mind on your own. And thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, learned something, and we will go over to some other teams in a few days. See you guys.